Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. This is going to be a short guide to highlight some ways that we can use behaviors in Motion 5 to do the job that we might use keyframing for. So if you have a look at these two lines here, they're running uh, quite a familiar animation pattern. If you follow with the After Effects reproductions that we do here with our title graphic reproductions, this will be really familiar. And you know, we get this by keyframing. So we keyframe to get control over the first point offset and last point offset. They do their thing at their own time to get this kind of effect. Okay, so can we do this with just parameter behaviors in Motion 5? Yes, we can. So let's jump into this group. Here's an example. So by using parameter behaviors, we get control over the last point offset and first point offset by uh, adding a behavior to it instead of keyframing. The behavior is doing all the keyframing for us. So then we know the great advantage of running with keyframing is that we get uh, the choice of the curves. We can edit the curves to do different things and get different styles of animations. But yes, we can do this with using parameter behaviors also. So by this example up here, I'm using the logarithmic parameter behavior instead, which is giving us uh, the same kind of animation that this curve would give us. I put up a guide on how to use parameter behaviors, logarithmic and exponential to reproduce the same kind of animations you get with keyframing. There's a link to that in the description. If you're just new to motion, do check it out. It might be useful. But what we're going to do today is look at another option entirely. We're going to look at using the write-on behavior instead. So let's check that out. Okay, so we are all set up with a line running a write-on behavior here. The write-on behavior is trimmed to two seconds in the timeline. So our question is, how can I get the write-on behavior to animate a line like this? So in a way that we would usually rely on keyframing for. So the first thing we might look at doing is the draw and erase function. And that does give us a very nice animation, but it's not exactly what we want. So what more can we do? Okay, so here's one thing we can do. Let's take the stroke length and set a keyframe at the start of the write-on behavior and bring the playhead to the end and drop that value to zero. I'll set things back to normal to draw. All right, so we've animated the line, uh, which is exactly the same kind of animation that we got from keyframing. And to exert control over this animation, to adapt it, you would just choose to start that first keyframe point later on, on the 6th or 10th or whatever frame you like. Alright, so that's one way. Here's another way. Let's get rid of the keyframes. And I'm going to add to this stroke length here a parameter behavior. Let's choose ramp. You could go for exponential or logarithmic, but we'll go for ramp now. All right, so I'm going to bring the playhead to the two second mark, and I'm going to enter a value here, the end value, minus 100, and bring the end condition back to meet the playhead at two seconds. So we have used just Motion 5's behaviors to get the same animation that we would get from keyframing. And to get control over when the first point offset makes its run, we would come and grab this start offset. If we bring the start this way, can you see in the timeline here when I adjust the start offset? 
that's going to dictate when the first point offset starts its run and that's going to give us a longer or shorter stretch. Okay, let's look at another way now. Okay, so we're back to just a line running the write-on behavior. So our next option is kind of like a compromise between using behaviors and kind of methods of keyframing. So you can see down here in the keyframe editor that when we add a write-on behavior, the write-on behavior has set up for us all the steps that we would take when we keyframe. So it's like a, a very fast shortcut to get all the keyframing into place without having to keyframe. But we have no influence here. We, if we work on anything here, it's all locked away because it's a motion behavior. But if we want to unlock everything down here, we can come here to this setting, custom speed, and now I have access to the curve. So what I'm going to do is, uh, if you want to work this way, turn off the behavior there, otherwise it will interfere with uh, what you want to do. So let's grab this curve and work with it to give it a different style. Now I mentioned before, uh, we can get this kind of animation without having to edit a curve like this. We can use the logarithmic and exponential parameter behaviors. It's really quick and simple to do. There's a guide for it if you want to check it out, but we'll just stay with this for now. Right, I'll turn the right on behavior back on, and you can see we've got a different style of stretch there, which is really nice. So now uh, let's turn it off and let's start working on the first point offset. So I can just use regular keyframing methods now. So using the right on behavior, like I said, it's a really good shortcut to just prepare all of your keyframing options immediately and you can jump right into it. So I'll bring the frame, the playhead to 10 frames and I'll set a keyframe on the first point offset here. Then I'll bring the playhead to here and I'll set that first point offset at 100%. Oops. So it's set up a curve for me there. I'll turn off the custom speed one so I know what I'm working with. I'll just isolate the curve in here. All right. So working this way, we can get the best of both worlds, maybe. So that's uh, the steps that I know of to sort of make the write-on behavior work as well as any keyframing options would. So I'm sure there's so many other things you can do, and if you know of any other tips and tricks, I'd love to hear them. Um, what we'll do now is have a look at practical application of just using the write-on with parameter behaviors. Okay, so we are set up here with a rectangle, and if you want to follow along, it has a width of 600, height of 250. Turn off the fill and give the stroke width 15, and I set the start cap and end cap to none, and it's all centered in the canvas. So let's use what we saw before to animate this into a border flourish. I'll come to behaviors and grab the write on behavior. Then I'll trim that to two seconds. Uh, actually, one second. The faster, the better for this kind of animation. Then I'm going to add the ramp parameter behavior to the stroke length and the playhead's at one second, so I want that end value to be minus 100, and I will use the end offset to bring the end condition forward. While we're here, um, you know, I could trim that ramp behavior 
instead of using the end offsets, but then you see it's going to reappear when the playhead is past the behavior. So then I'd have to trim the border shape itself to the one second mark. So when we leave it running and run with the end offsets, we don't have to worry about that. In this kind of situation, I prefer to work this way. So we've got the end condition set to one second, but I want this to be much shorter, so I'm going to come to uh, 10 frames here and have this first point offset kick in much sooner by dragging the offset, the start offset to here. So, all right, that's what we want. And now, uh, all I'm going to do is grab this border, duplicate it, and I'll just turn my controls back on. Uh, I could use the rotations, but I'm going to use this option here, and I'm going to hold shift and flip it this way, and then hold shift and flip it this way. So there you go, uh, it's really useful. Uh, this is something that I would always do by keyframing before until I learned to do it by behaviors. So that's all I wanted to show you today. Um, there's so much more to the write on behavior and like I said before, if you know of any other great things, I'd love to know about it. Thank you for watching, I hope this was useful.